Hi guys, I'm AJ Karag, uh, a BSRT student of Family Clinic College. So I'm going to tackle about the timeline of radiotherapy. So let's get started. Timeline of radiotherapy. The discovery of X-ray. William Rangen discovered X-rays in 1895 while studying cathode rays in a gas discharge tube. He observed that another type of radiation was produced that could be detected outside the tube. This radiation could penetrate opaque substances, produce fluorescence, blacken a photographic plate, and ionize a gas. He named this new radiation as X-rays. In fact, one of the first known X-ray image ever produced was his wife, Bertha's left hand. In 1898, the discovery of radioactive element. The Curies discovered the existence of the elements radium and polonium in the research of pitch blend. On April 1902, Marie Curie and Pierre Curie successfully isolate radioactive radium salts from the mineral pitch blend in their laboratory in Paris. Nineteen oh three Niels Finsen in phototherapy. Niels Finsen, a foros Danish physician, discovered that lupus was amenable to treatment by ultraviolet rays when separated out by a system of quartz crystals. And thereafter created a lamp to sift out the rays. The Finsen lamp became widely used in for phototherapy and derives from it became used when experimenting with other types of radiotherapy. In 1905, it was estimated that fully 50% of the cases of lupus were successfully healed by Finsen's methods. Finsen was soon awarded a Nobel Prize for his research. Nineteen twenty to 1930 the first use of radiotherapy. Soon after the discovery of radium in 1898 by Pierre and Marie Curie, there was speculation in whether the radiation could be used for the therapy in the same way as that from X-rays. Besnier suggested the use of radium for therapy along the same purposes as X-rays and ultraviolet rays. Becker and for this purpose, loaned some radium to Henry Alexandre Danlos of the hospital St. Louis in Paris in 1901. Danlos successfully treated a few cases of lupus with an admixture of radium and barium chloride. Further, trials of radium therapy began, though at a much lower pace than did those using x-rays because radium was expensive and difficult to obtain. Next, 1935. Fractionation. In the early days of radiation, it was generally held that the biggest dose tolerated, given as fast as possible, was the best treatment. During the period, roughly 1920s to 1930s. Claude Rigaud argued the differential effect of X-rays on cancer and normal tissues could be best obtained by giving the treatment slow. He exposed shift testicles to large doses of ionizing radiations. Drums could be sterilized with one large dose, but this quantity of radiation also caused the skin adjacent to drums scrotum to have a skin reaction. It was found that if the original dose was fractionated or broken into smaller doses spread out over a period of time, the animals would still become sterile but with considerably less damage to their skin. This approach, known as fractionation, is one of the most important underlying principles in radiotherapy. To this day, Fractionation lies at the heart of many treatment programs 
currently used in radiation oncology. Next, 1935. Use of fractionated radiotherapy in a wide variety of tumors. Henry Cotard, an early French radiation oncologist, pioneered the use of fractionated radiotherapy in a wide variety of tumors. He reported impressive results using this approach in patients with locally advanced laryngeal cancers in 1934. Brachytherapy Brachytherapy dates back in 1901, shortly after the discovery of radioactivity by Becker in 1896, when Pierre Curie suggested to Alexander Danlos that a radioactive source could be inserted into a tumor. It was found that the radiation caused the tumor to shrink. Independently, Graham Bell also suggested the use of radiation in his way. In the early 20th century, techniques for the application of brachytherapy were pioneered at the Curie Institute in Paris by Dan Loss and at St. Luke's and Memorial Hospital in New York by Robert Abb. Next is the Manchester system. Herbert Parker was a medical physicist at the Holt Radium Institute who developed the Manchester system for radium therapy along with Patterson in 1932. Their techniques enabled physicians to arrange radium needles or tubes in configurations that would maximize the radiation dose to a tumor while minimizing that to healthy tissue. The Manchester system for radiotherapy was the most comprehensive and widely used system in the field of radiotherapy. Next, 1949 to 1951. The Cobalt 60. In 1949, Dr. Harold Johns, a Canadian medical physicist, sent a request to the National Research Council, or NRC, asking them to produce Cobalt 60 isotopes for use in a Cobalt Therapy Unit prototype. On October 27, 1951, the world's first cancer treatment with Cobalt 60 radiation took place at Victoria Hospital for a 43-year-old cervical cancer patient. This marked an important milestone for the fight against cancer. Next, 1956. Linear Accelerators An exciting development was the introduction of high-energy megavoltage treatment machines known as linear accelerators or linux such machines were capable of producing high energy deeply penetrating beams allowing for the very first time treatment of tumors deep inside the body without excessive damage to the overlying skin and the other normal tissues dr henry kaplan and physicist edward ginston developed the first medical linear accelerator at Stanford University, San Francisco, in 1956. The first patient to be treated using this machine was a two-year-old child named Gordon Isaacs with retinoblastoma. Treatment was highly successful. For more than 40 years later, this patient remain free of disease with good vision. 1965 First use of radioactive isotopes or microsphere Investigators report the first use of the radioactive isotope yttrium 90 or Y90 for the treatment of inoperable liver cancers for which previously there were no treatment options. 1981 Chemotherapy plus radiation for inoperable cancer Adding the chemotherapy drug 5-fluororacil to standard radiation is shown to boost 1-year survival 
from 10% to 40% for patients with locally advanced inoperable pancreatic cancer. 1987 Gamma Knife Therapy Swedish neurosurgeon Professor Lars Lexen and a colleague Borgi Larsson developed the first gamma knife model in 1968 during their search for an invasive modality to treat functional brain disorders. Subsequently, the gamma knife was proven to be beneficial in treating brain tumors and arteriovenous abnormalities. Continuing refinement through 1975 resulted in the forerunner of today's gamma knife. In 1987, the gamma knife was introduced to the United States. Next, 1990, the 3D conformal radiotherapy. It was in 1990s that the 3D conformal radiotherapy, a form of radiation therapy where the fields used are designed such that the radiation dose is mostly delivered to the tumor, while the surrounding tissues receive little to no dose of radiation. These attempts to deliver a tumoricidal dose to the tumor while minimizing the damage to the surrounding healthy tissues. Two thousand one, the adjuvant therapy. Adjuvant treatment is an addition designed to help reach the ultimate goal. Adjuvant therapy for cancer usually refers to surgery followed by chemo or radiation therapy to help decrease the risk of the cancer recurring or coming back. In two thousand one, a major trial shows that giving patients chemotherapy and radiation after surgery, an approach known as adjuvant therapy, significantly improved survival. Next, 2006. Genetic mutations affect the survival for oligodendroglioma. Two studies find that the patients with oligodendroglioma tumors, a form of glioma that lack certain parts of chromosomes, 1 and 19 are more sensitive to treatment and have better survival than patients whose tumors are not missing this genetic material. 2018 Smarter Cancer Treatment AI Tools Automates Radiation Therapy Plan He and his team at the University of Toronto's Department of Mechanical and Industrial Engineering including Justin Bautillier Supervisor Professor Timothy Chan and Professor Andrea McNeven at University of Toronto's Faculty of Medicine are looking at radiation therapy design as an intricate but solvable optimization problem. Their software uses AI to mine historical radiation therapy data. This information is then applied to an optimization engine to develop treatment plans. The researcher applied his software tool in their study of 217 patients with throat cancer who also received treatments developed using conventional methods. The therapies generated by Babier's AI achieved comparable results to patients' conventionally planned treatments, and it did so within 20 minutes. The researcher recently published their findings in Medical Physics. So, thanks for watching guys. I hope you learned something from my presentation. Thank you. Bye-bye.